G'day ladies and gents and welcome to another episode. In this video I'm going to show you a little wreck that I have in Moreton Bay. Now this is not just in sort of run of the mill wreck. It, there's something really cool that's happened. Uh, it's a bit of a natural occurrence that happens with a lot of wrecks. But this one in particular is a really good example of it. I found it originally because it was in a big hole. So it was a little bit of an odd thing. It looked to me almost if you're in North Queensland like a wonky hole. We don't get them in Moreton Bay. I have confirmed with scientists. What we do have in Moreton Bay is paleo channels. So they're very old little river channels, etc. There is quite a few in the bay that I have found. Um, but yeah, it caught my eye. It looked like a little wonky hole. Went back many, many years ago. We took probably eight, nine years ago. And I actually put my mate Tim McDonald, Spiro, legend guy. Um, probably one of the best spear fishermen in Australia. If you don't follow his channel, have a look. Tim McDonald fishing, spear fishing down under. I guarantee that any fisherman will love it. Some of the stuff is phenomenal. Tim's um, a great mate of mine, has been a long time. He actually married my wife and I as well. So I talked Timmy to this spot about nine years ago and I said, Tim, this is a bit of a weird one. I've dropped underwater cameras. I can't actually see it very well. Uh, it was a really clear day, so Tim came out. He dove down, had a look, come up and says, there's a center console sitting in, in a bit of a hole, uh, but it has a lot of big cod around it. So straight away I knew, right, that's why it's in a hole. Cod create a lot of protection around wrecks. So they move sand away constantly to make sure it's exposed and offer them the most protection. Over the years, they do it constantly. A boat will just slowly start going through the, the sea floor. So it'll just get further and further down. And you're talking on nearly over a meter and a half deep into a hole that it's gone so i'll show you some of the footage i'll show you sound of shots my dff 3d Furuno. uh it'll, it'll actually um show it quite well and, and give you a great idea of what i'm talking about so hopefully you guys enjoy it while i waited for the high tide in clearer water so that i could film the wreck with the underwater drone i decided to go have a fish and it wasn't long until i found some action I've just hooked up on a duo tide minnow 200 just down the channel. It looks like a big tailor. How cool is that? It's a cracking tailor. Got him hooked in the side, but it's got three sets of hooks. See him out here smashing the bait. That is cool. Oh, look at that. That's a pretty good tailor, that. Far out. Cracking Taylor. What the size of that? How yeah, good. Big lure. 200 mil long lure. Look at them all around the boat here. There's heaps of them. Oh, yes! <laughs> On a popper. That's cool. Oh! <laughs> Big tailor. Big jump out of the water. That was awesome. A couple little twitches of that popper and it was all over it. That's cool. Only six pound line. Big fish like that, it's gonna get pretty hard. And that's on a six to 12 pound blade and tails rod. And a little ATC, 3000 carbon reel. Wow, that's a beautiful fish for a bait tail, that is massive. Wow. Yes, that's probably a, getting up to around 60 centimeters that. On a Zurich popper, popperazzi that one's called. Caught a ton of flatter on those ones. That particular color, that bright green. How cool. Look at that. <laughs> that is bizarre. I'm in the middle of Morton Bay at the moment. And I've just caught a big dart. That is definitely a first for me. Far out, that is bizarre. There we go. 
a dart in the middle of Morton Bay. It's the first I've ever seen one. You must be mixed in with the tailor at the moment. Eating up that bait. See the little tiny bait they're chewing on? Very small little white bait. But they're hitting just about any lure I'm throwing out at the moment. They are hungry. That was a bloody cracking dart too. That's crazy. See you buddy. Hell yeah, first cast. Oh, he's a good one too. Nice. Oh, he's a big one. Look at the colours on it. That's crazy. Yes. Look at that. Beautiful. Screwed that one. First cast. Bam, on. Bit of bait pop on the squid jig again. Number one victim. Here we go, here we go. It's on. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. Three from three. Oh yeah. On a roll, three from three. I'm dragging them off these weed banks into the shallow water here where I can see them. Then I can work out whether they're gonna take a jig or not. Here we go. Gotcha. Four from four. How cool. <laughs> Man, I love it when the squid are like this. How's that? Four from four. Oh, he's full of water too. He's gonna ink for sure. Come on, mate, let go of the bloody jig. Thank you. Something different. What have we got here? It's fighting very different. Might be a little trevally by the looks of it. Crazy, diverse range of species in this area at the moment. A lot of bait to feed on, all that little white bait. And with it, lots of predatory fish. Looks like a little big eye trevally. That's cool. Yep. Twin sets of hooks on lures. You often get that second hook into the side of the face, like that. There we go. That. Little big eye Trevally. Very similar to a GT, but they got a really big eye and don't grow as big. Calm down, buddy. There we go. Gotta be careful of these, super sharp. There we go. Something different. Grunt, grunt, grunt. See ya, buddy. Little Venom V-Swim, 90 mil. Getting a few battle scales on it. These things are weapons. After catching some more big dart on metal slugs and also another half a dozen big tailor on several different lures, I decided to head for the wreck and capture some sound images and also some underwater footage of it. To begin showing you this wreck, I decided to run over at 20 knots to show you what it looked like when I first found it 8 years ago. As you can see it's a considerably deep hole but appears somewhat small in width, particularly when you travel over it at speed. Sanding back over at 2 knots gives us a much better idea of its size. It's important to mention here that I was using a wide beam transducer. 
This can have some disadvantages at times and often miss or hide small structure and fish holding really close to the bottom. Instead of separating the wreck from the bottom, it tries to blend it together and this is made worse because of the boat sitting in the hole. Going over the spot with my 7 meter rip tob which has a narrow beam transducer, you can now see that it separates the wreck and the fish from the bottom. Looking at this spot on the Furuno side scan, you can clearly see that the center console is around 5 meters long and sitting in a hole that is around 10 to 15 meters wide. Next is running over it with my Furuno DFF 3D, which gives us another great look and understanding of this wreck sitting in the hole that the cod have created. This underwater footage was from when Tim dove it for the first time eight years ago. There were so many big cods sitting on it, with several opening their mouths and flaring the gills, trying to intimidate Tim while he swam around. Tim also took the time to have a bit of a test drive of this boat, but said the steering was a little bit dodgy. Having been back several times with the underwater drone over the last four years, I've seen many changes in the marine life sitting on it. Unfortunately, I've never seen it hold big cod in those numbers like that again, and it's hard to say if someone has caught them out or they've simply moved on. It does, however, continue to hold cod of smaller sizes, along with lionfish, Moses perch, and more. It also offers great protection for resting green and loggerhead turtles. And I captured this one having a great scratch, which could be at trying to remove unwanted barnacles. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. It really does help. Um, unfortunately, people don't realize you don't make a lot of money from YouTube. It's a path that I begrudgingly have gone down. A lot of people have told me to do it. I actually stepped away from my full-time job. I uh, work three days a week with my job and the rest is for YouTube. And I tell you what, I'm working harder than ever. Trying to fish on those sort of days that I've got off on the weekends then edit, um, people will be very surprised. So one, one day of fishing equals two plus to three days of editing. Uh, you do some big trips, you're looking three or four days of editing. So especially if you're putting underwater footage, aerial footage, music, um, yeah, it's a killer. There's so much to it that people don't realize, um, but it's the path I've taken. So I take responsibility for being a bit of a pain in the butt. Everyone subscribing, etc., helps the algorithms, which means YouTube push it to more people. Um, you're relying heavily on YouTube to push your videos. So if people subscribe, like, comment, share, that all helps those algorithms and gets it out to a wider audience. Uh, be very much appreciated. Until next time, guys, tight lines.